All right, we're good to go. Um, all right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name's Sean Daig. I'm on the TC. I do Nova, DevStack, QA things. Um, and my name is Thierry Carrez. I'm uh, at the TC and doing race management stuff. Um, we'll be mentioning in this talk the, all the changes that we went through over the last like six to 12 months of our OpenStack governance, OpenStack projects governance, and, and what, what we actually implemented there. So we'll like introduce the rationale why we actually made those changes, um, what the change actually was, the direct consequences of the change, and, and where we're like sitting right now. And uh, there's a whole lot of information here. And people have had a lot of questions. So this talk is really structured. We're going to try to move through things relatively quickly and leave a extended QA session at the end so that all of the burning ideas that you've got, um, things that you might be confused about, things you want to talk about, we can do then. Um, so let's just start with kind of why we got made changes this past fall. Um, you know, if you look a little bit back at a history of OpenStack, you know, we started this five-year mission um, with two projects, Nova Compute, Swift Object Store. Um, and over time, the number of projects in OpenStack grew. Um, some of these were parts of existing projects that split out um, to have their own separate teams, become a little more modular. Um, other things were new good ideas that people had that fit within the realm of OpenStack, like interesting things that you would want to do in or with a cloud. Um, over time, we built process around that to deal with the fact that there were so many of these projects coming in, and we had a formal incubation cycle, um, and things matured, and there was this ladder that they went up. Um, where that left us was this picture, which is in every OpenStack presentation ever, um, and explains almost nothing, um, because it's a big, complicated mess. Right, um, And this is where we had gotten. There was a lot of projects in OpenStack. And the process of adding something new meant, uh, because of all the coupling and all the interaction patterns, a really sort of interesting and hard puzzle game to figure out how this came in and interacted with everything else correctly all at the same time. Um, we effectively gotten to a point where uh, our eventual consistency model was not working at the scale of the number of projects that we had. And, and that is what is what we call the integrated release. That was uh, the one and only product of our community was this set of core projects that we would release every, uh, every six months on a predictable schedule. And as, the, um, as our community grew, uh, we encountered this paradox that this integrated release was too small and too big at the same time. It was too small to express the, the rich diversity of the projects that were uh, um, naturally uh, uh, appearing in our ecosystem and, and that were part of our community on one side. And, and on the other, it was already too big for anyone to consider installing all the pieces in any kind of OpenStack deployment. Um, so uh, the other problem we, we quickly had with this single integrated release concept was that since it was the only answer that we were able to give, we started up piling too many questions. Um, too many questions of which the integrated release was the answer. So we, there were like release management or people working in packaging wanted to know, uh, is it part of the release? Is it something I need to uh, uh, work to release at the, end of, at the end of the cycle? Is it something I should strive to package, to package OpenStack in the end? Um, people from QA or, or, or the continuous integration would ask the question, is it things we need to um, test together? Is it things we, we, that are so tightly related that we have to test every single co proposed commit against the current state of development of all the other projects? And the, the answer to that was the integrated release as well. Uh, then enthusiasts wanted to know, is it part of the ecosystem? Is it part of what the, the this thing, this community, this summit, you call OpenStack. Uh, you would have operators wanting to know, is this mature enough to deploy? Is it something that is left the experimental stage to the point where you can, you can uh, safely deploy it? 
uh, operators, again, wanted to ask a slightly different question, which was, is it stable enough? Is it, is it something that you will change completely overnight below me, or is it something I can build uh, on top of the APIs you propose? Are you going to support those APIs for a long time? If you deprecate a feature, how long it will take? And we, st we still had a single answer to that, was the integrity release. Um, end users wanted to know if this is part of the, is, is this a part of every single OpenStack cloud that they will find out there? Is it, is it uh, the minimum interoperability features that we are required to, um, to interpret between clouds? Finally, developers, well, last not, but not least, developers wanted to know if, if the thing they were working on was considered valuable, was considered first class. Uh, and, and it's not just developers, it's also their employers would just only fund developers working on OpenStack projects, so only on projects that were part of the integrity release. So we had this chicken and egg problem where we were asking those projects that were uh, coming up to be mature, stable, uh, 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 part of uh, 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 test, co gated, tested together, and at the same time we were preventing resources to get to them because we were basically saying these are not first class citizens yet. And finally, cross project teams would would try to survive over all this because everything we added to the integrity release we uh, had this assumption that cross-project efforts throughout OpenStack would have to support them. So documentation, we have to produce documentation for everything that is in the integrated release. Or release management will have to uh, uh, basically handle, manage the release process for, for all those projects. Uh, QA would write tests. Uh, I mean, there was this assumption that, that anything we add to the, to the integrated release will have to spread support for it. And, that created this situation where those, those teams are, are uh, really constrained in resources, and anything we added just, just put too much strain on them. So we were at this, at this stage. By, by, by the Juno cycle, we couldn't grow the integrated release anymore. We couldn't reduce it anymore either. Uh, any project that we would add would have to be a positive answer to all those different questions that people use the integrated release as the single answer for. And so there was a lot of pressure, new projects still coming. 100% of the technical committee activity was, was just handling this incubation la ladder, and we could not just accept new projects at the end of it. So there was this bottleneck, and time was really ripe for a reboot of the system. So this, realistically, what we were looking at was refactoring the community, right? This is what you get to with any large software stack. At some point, you have to decide um, what it's time to refactor. It's time to figure out what's working, don't break that, um, figure out where your bottlenecks are and eliminate them, and then go and realize some interesting new patterns had already emerged organically down underneath you and grab those things and replicate them other places. Um, and the beginning of this refactoring, the, the key fundamental sort of switch in your head for this is changing the question of, is this OpenStack to are you OpenStack? Um, because it turns out OpenStack is made of people. Um, right? We kept having this idea that, that we were blessing uh, maybe functional areas, but it turned out what it really was was teams that were delivering an interesting thing and that had a community around them. Um, we have a set of tests. Uh, in our mind going forward with the big tent about what are you OpenStack means. Um, there's sort of four basic points. Uh, the first of which is, do they align with the OpenStack mission? Right? The OpenStack mission is to produce an open source, ubiquitous cloud platform um, that works for public, private, and hybrid at small and large scales, all scales. Um, is this a project which helps put forward that mission? Is it something that uh, is a sensible service that would add into that, um, a tool that helps move that forward, something that consumes existing OpenStack in an interesting way that's part of that thing that we're all trying to do together. Um, there's the, do these projects, these groups of people do things in the OpenStack way? We have an OpenStack way. It's the four opens, right? Um, 
Is it being done on an open source license? Is the community being run in an open way? We have this mechanism for uh, voting for leadership um, and the way that contributions work in projects. Is the development being done in the open um, through our tool chain, Garrett, the way our core review system works, the way our upstream testing works? And is the design being done in the open? Is this being done um, in forms like this, on public archived channels and public archived mailing lists so that anyone has the ability to participate in that. It's not happening you know, in someone's hallway somewhere at just one entity. Um, and do these projects um, coming in, do they ensure some basic interoperability with the rest of OpenStack? Um, specifically, you know, the minimum barrier we're talking about here is if they have users, they have to interact with Keystone. Like, you clearly aren't OpenStack if you do that. Um, and you should try whenever possible, whenever it makes sense, not to duplicate something that's there. But sometimes there's more than one answer to a particular problem, and that's OK. Um, and allowing that and encouraging that in our community is fine. Um, and lastly, you know, we have this technical committee, which is uh, directly elected by all the technical contributors. Um, if you want to be uh, are you OpenStack, you have to say that we'll take guidance from the technical committee when it's important. There's sometimes times when the TC has to uh, work across all the projects to solve a thing for all of OpenStack together. So the, the other side of the change is uh, what we call tags. Um, so on one hand, we make the OpenStack tent way more inclusive of the various new uh, projects that are, make up our community. But at the same time, we want to provide clearer information about those projects so that you can more easily navigate the, the, this, this, this tent. And tags are meant to provide information to downstream users of OpenStack. They are not meant to be project badges that every project should collect to be a good OpenStack citizen. All those tags are, must be driven by one question that is useful for the consumers of that ecosystem and provide a precise answer to the question rather than lump all the, all, all the questions into a single concept called the integrated release and hope that the TC will make the call if you meet all of them or not. Um, so the idea is we no longer need to have a single answer. We can be extremely precise. We just need to find the right questions now, which is slightly different. The, the consequences of, uh, the direct consequences of those two, uh, two approaches well, it doesn't change that much. The, the, on, the fact is there were OpenStack projects beyond the integrated release already. Um, there were projects developing on, on the OpenStack dev mailing list, participating in the design summit, participating in the conference here, uh, um, behaving the OpenStack way, following, uh, following advice from, from the rest of the community, developed really in the open. and they were just considered second class citizens. They were not part of the integrated release, so they would not get that design summit space, as much design summit space as the blessed projects. But they were existing, and we are just recognizing the fact that they were existing already and they were OpenStack already. Um, the, the other non-consequence is that it doesn't really dilute our ability to focus on, on important things. Uh, that's a common fear with, with the introduction of this change. Is that like more project, that means you will dilute more, uh, uh, the, 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 especially the cross-project efforts. But it's quite the other way around, because cross-project efforts already had to support all the integrated release, and they had no choice in that. They could not, they had to support equally anything that the TC would add to the integrated release. And that created a lot of strain, and we moved that the other way around, where those cross-project efforts now can choose to focus their efforts on a smaller set of projects that they, they uh, feel more comfortable working with. And that's, again, a change that was already started to be implemented, like the documentation team no longer created documentation for, for all the projects uh, at the same time. I think Sean will touch on that. Yeah. Oh. I, two uh, dueling flippers. Um, so. Uh, an important part of this is the this horizontal teams um, moving to a more self-service model. So as Terry said, this is already starting to happen. Um, and it was one of these patterns that was emerging that we tried to capture and sort of formalize going forward. Um, 
the horizontal teams just couldn't support everything that, we're that we were trying to do. So instead, um, started to pivot and be as re responsible for building some sort of framework for which projects could provide their own service for that particular function, um, documentation, testing, even DevStack integration, and let the horizontal teams focus on maybe a smaller set of things plus an easy way for anyone that's in our community to plug into it. Um, we have a whole bunch of examples of this that have already happened. Um, you know, the, uh, the external plugin interface to DevStack was one of these ones that, that I was working on to make it just super simple. Any, anybody wants to plug in, here's a hook and a stable interface, and um, now you can have a very easy development environment um, that integrates your thing with all the other parts of OpenStack that you want to integrate with. Um, the documentation team, you know, in this last cycle, um, had previously been maintaining, maintaining API docs um, themselves and their own repositories. Like all the Nova API documentation is now back in the Nova tree where it probably belongs. Um, and it's now a Nova ownership responsibility, which is what it should be, right? Every project um, needs to kind of own all, all the parts of its artifacts that come out. And, you know, can ask for help, can ask for help with tooling from other, from some of the horizontal teams, but has to get into this model where each project is responsible for its own vertical to become a durable element. Um, this gets even more interesting when we started talking about testing because, as Thierry said before, our, um, our old testing model was we take everything in OpenStack at every commit level and throw it all together and run a bunch of integration tests and like thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and that gets really, really complicated to figure out what the thumb down was when we're now talking about 40 Git trees. Um, you know, this is, I like to think of this as testing with clay, right? Um, if you are a sufficiently skilled artist, you can build really, really cool things out of clay. Um, and uh, that's what we were giving our community, was a pile of clay. Um, this new model where we're kind of moving things into, uh, back into the projects, um, we are trying to go with more of this Lego model, durable elements that we test in smaller units that then we can plug together and assume that other parts are already working. Um, there, you are limited by what you can build with Legos, but a lot more people can do this. Um, and if we're talking about ubiquitous cloud computing, the lots more people is a really important part of this. So another, another aspect is how do releases look in this, uh, in this big tent? So there won't be an integrated release anymore as such uh, at the end of the Liberty cycle. We'll still have coordinated release point at the end of the six month cycle for the projects that are willing to, uh, to uh, commit to those, those deadlines and those milestones. Uh, but the, the main change is that we'll, we'll move from managing most of them to, uh, prof to refine processes and provide tools for each project to be able to uh, produce those releases easier. And that should make my job uh, smaller, which is a good news. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the binding aspect is the release, the development cycle. We would still all be, use, be using a six months development cycle, even if some project might do intermediary releases where it makes sense. Um, but we would still mostly organize everything in six months development cycles between, between Design Summit. The, one of the key, I think, question that is still open is how do we redefine from a marketing perspective the communication around releases? Because those used to be uh, uh, pre-digested in like number of new features or number of bug fixes or number of contributors, number of new projects. And those metrics don't necessarily make a lot of sense in this new world where you add new projects. Um, so we need to, we need to revise the, 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 the marketing work uh, around, around release time because we won't be able to communicate the same type of information as a supposedly closed set of projects would allow you to. Again, it's not, it's not a complete change because we were adding projects before. Uh, it's just recognizing that when we were communicating in number of features, number of developers, number of projects, that might not have been a, a real metric to, to judge this, the health of OpenStack from. Um, then, present and future, that's yeah. yours. Um, 
So since we got rolling um, with this new big tent model, um, and we defined this much sort of simpler definition of what was open stack, are you open stack? And um, we've added a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we've added a number of things that were uh, look kind of like traditional open stack services, REST APIs that provide some particular point function, um, you know, things like uh, Magnum and Congress and MagnetoDB, Murano and Mistral. Um, we've added uh, the Rally project, which focuses on benchmarking. Um, and this is actually a very interesting case of, you know, there are some overlaps with the existing QA tool chain, but uh, it takes a different approach to certain things. Um, and that's okay in this new model. We can have uh, related problems or even the same problem being approached in different ways um, by two teams that are you know, working in the OpenStack way and, and producing good stuff. Um, we have some things that are different than we've ever had before. Um, like there's a, a whole Puppet OpenStack modules community that lets you, uh, that is a whole pipeline for building and installing a cloud using Puppet. They've been developing for a long time. It's a very active base. Um, and now this is, you know, they're definitely OpenStack and they're part of this whole thing. Um, I will expect to see other operator-like elements coming in as well. Um, and you know another horizontal effort, the security effort, which was the traditional um, OpenStack security group and vulnerability management team kind of building a new thing um, and is building some new security audit facilities for uh, OpenStack developers to be able to use. Um, and these are all great things to have as part of our community. Um, they've always been part of our community and now they're recognized as such. And they, they always were OpenStack, OpenStack people, OpenStack groups. So it's just recognizing them for what they were already. On the tags side, we've been looking for questions that are interesting to, uh, to provide answers for. Uh, we've been answering the question, when do I expect updates? How long do I have support? Is this something that will be released every six months by uh, creating tags describing the release model? We've been also addressing the question of the long-term longevity of a project by creating a, a tag that describes if a team is uh, diverse. So is, is the team producing the project coming from a single company that might like change strategy and just drop it? Or is it coming from a more diverse community and you can expect it to survive any, uh, any corporate uh, roller coaster um, event? Um, the next, the next questions we want to, to, to help answering is where do I start? Is, I see you have this bunch of projects now. Is it where, where, what are, what are the, the, what is the base kit I should, I should probably be considering first before, before deploying others? Uh, will my stuff break after I upgrade? It ties into the stability question. Uh, what is the, what is the commitment each project makes? as to supporting features and APIs for over the long run? Is it, is it the project that says, well, I'll, I can break everything every release? Or is it the project, uh, a more mature project will say, well, I will not deprecate your API forever? Uh, and that type of commitment is not necessarily easy to extract from the current project documentation. And we'll, we'll create a, a tag for that to describe it more uh, and, and make it ex extremely easy to access that information. Uh, next, more good questions. We will be looking forward uh, uh, the questions that are useful for our community. We want more people involved. We want operators directly involved in creating those tags, maintaining them, uh, uh, and defining the criteria that, that apply to them. Uh, we've, I talked about maturity and stability. That's the first two examples that we want the ops to help us uh, uh, define the meaning of. What is mature? Uh, and they are the best place to answer that question what, and, and to to define what maturity actually uh, means to them. And finally, we'll, we'll have to make that more easily consumable, especially by newcomers in the ecosystem, because not everyone knows that they need to look into the governance uh, repository to see where the tags fall. Um, so we'll, we'll probably work on, a, on, a webs on the, the openstack.org website to exhibit that information for uh, like general consumers, uh, newcomers to the ecosystem. And with that, and that brings us. Um, we are done, um, except we left plenty of time for questions, because there always seem to be some. There's a mic in the middle there, because this is being recorded. So it would be great if you had a question, if you went to the mic and asked it there. Ready? Go yes, go for, for it, it, dude. 
Um, I had a question about um, interoperability with regard to some of the DEF core stuff. Is one of these questions, does a project intend in the future to become part of the, what will presumably be an expanding DEF core definition? Um, so today it does not. Um, and um, the way that the, the artifact that's currently in the bylaws around the TC's interaction with DEF core um, is a thing that's called the TC approved release, um, which um, I, yes, hey, we even have a slide for it. Um, the TC approved release. So there's specific wording in the bylaw that the, the, the TC has to produce this. Um, the, there's a couple proposals out of what this is going to be in first iteration. In first iteration, this is probably going to be what was the integrated release and full stop. Um, and the, the thing is, uh, of what's in the integrated release, the, the, only, the only thing this tag is important for is what the board will issue trademark programs on. Um, right now, of all the projects in this, over half of them are things the board has not decided that is trademarkable. So we feel like there is a lot of ground to be covered within the existing window before we decide like something else needs to be added to that. And that'll probably be a pull model as much as a push model. But it, it's true that it's one of the meanings the integrated release had, that because since that was the an only answer we could give, that was also used by the board as the, the group of projects that might make sense to apply trademarks on. And we'll, we'll, we'll basically uh, refactor that into a new tag so that it's only used to mean that meaning rather than like have the, all those piled up meanings. Go for it. So uh, maybe first just kudos to you guys for working on this real challenge to scale this kind of community. I thought refactoring was a great way to think about it. Um, you guys talked a little bit about uh, the beginning of this, uh, some things that maybe the integrated release was kind of tough on. It was the only answer to the question and, and you almost made it sound like, well, maybe that was a bad idea. Why do we do it? But I think one of the big things that it got us is sort of a known quantity. And I worry, or I, I wonder what your thoughts are uh, moving forward with Big Tent, that maybe documentation in one project versus the quality of the documentation or the dev stack integration in another might not be as good. You gave the, the Lego analogy, which I thought was great, but one of the reasons Legos work really well is they snap together very tightly. So the one important uh, aspect of that is uh, we should be able to still uh, know which projects are uh, reaching a, a, a satisfying level of documentation. And currently, we don't really have. How, how would you quantify that, though? Sorry? How, how would you quantify a satisfactory level of documentation? That seems like a very difficult question to answer objectively. Is it not? So yeah. um, there are fine lines in there, but reasonable people can uh, say that this documentation is terrible. Um, right? So, um, you know, whether or not we're talking about like a, a, a three grade scale or like a, you know, 20 grade scale, like how you're going to rate things, whatever. Um, I think it's, you're right. There's certain things that require subjective human opinions here about what, is this documentation sufficient for um, operators to actually use this thing in a real way? Is it going to? Is it going to be community driven? Like people are going to be doing likes on the thing? Like, yeah, documentation is good on this one, or this one's mature, or this one has some longevity. Well, <laughs> so the, um, the part, part of the maturity tag, when, when we discussed it with the operators at the Philadelphia mid cycle, uh, they, they included the presence of a number of documentation guides as uh, one of the uh, metrics to consider a project operationally, uh, operationally mature. And, and there are other things like upgradability, the fact that you, know, you provide database migrations to over, uh, um, over uh, from one version to another. A few other uh, key aspects, the fact that you don't have to play with the database your, with your own hands <laughs> to actually be able to start la launching the project, but can do it with proper CLI or API access. That type of stuff that doesn't really, uh, uh, is not necessarily uh, obvious, but if, if that group can refine a set of things that like any mature project, any project calling itself mature should should have. That's uh, I think a good 
good way of looking at it, and they will refine it, they will improve it, and I will encourage projects to actually reach that level of, ma of operational maturity, which I think is, uh, uh, we have to have a base standard, and, in, and currently some projects are under that. Yeah, and there's a some integrated projects are under that. Yeah, there's a dedicated um, session in the ops track about operator tagging um, that's on the schedule here this week. It's, I think it's tomorrow. Um, and so anyone that's interested in that should dive in. <laughs> it's not recorded, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. How, how would the AETC status be um, defined in this new model? So AETC is defined by the, by the bylaws, by the OpenStack Foundation bylaws, and it's a contribution to an OpenStack project. So the, there will likely be more ATCs. Uh, that doesn't mean every ATC will get a, uh, necessarily. Uh, I mean, the fact that ATCs are invited to the summit is is like a, a, a sort of even staff decision. Basically, currently we, uh, it's not even ATCs anymore now because ATC it's like if you uh, contribute over the last year and this time around only contributors from the last six months got invited so that we could reduce the the number of invitations. Um, so the. There will be more ATCs. ATCs will all vote for the technical committee, which is like full circle with the uh, constituency and the, and the, elec the elections. And but the, the 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 rights of the ATCs, as far as design summit go, might might not just follow up. Not every ATC might get to summit or something like this. All right, more questions. I have a question. You have a question. Go for it. Uh, what about programs, Sean? Programs, right. Um, so so is our, our open stack is made of people. Um, one of the real big drawbacks about the old model, a drawback that I don't know that we even really realized fully until we started to move to the new model, was that we had this concept of a blessed program, like the compute program. And then everything that had to do anything with anywhere near compute, basically they had a global lock on that construct. Um, and uh, you know, one of the ways that this played out suboptimally um, is some of the containers work that was happening, where it's like, well, that's kind of maybe looks like compute, so it has to start and get through this set of gatekeepers instead of the fact that it's kind of a different thing, and it kind of has a different API, and it kind of should just crop up on its own, right? Magnum, like under the new model, we just said, this is not an Ovascope, this is, this is Magnum, has a thing which is about orchestrating containers within existing OpenStack stuff. Um, and so this program concept and these global locks on ideas um, just goes away. This is about project teams, which are groups of people that accomplish a thing, um, and uh, the fact that another group of people is accomplishing a thing that's near that thing is fine. Right. Under, um, yeah. under the old model, we ended up having uh, uh, forcing some teams to work within other teams where you know, artificial leadership, they, they did not necessarily recognize the leadership of the group they were forced to work in. And so that created unnecessary tension and, and some project could not like, leave, the ground, leave the ground just because they, they couldn't grow inside an existing an existing program anymore. So uh, we basically align the structure with reality, which is there are groups of people that are working on, on interesting stuff. And we, if they behave like an OpenStack project and they've helped further the OpenStack mission, then yes, they're one of us, basically. Yeah, so on the uh, flip side of what you just discussed, do you also worry about dilution of a particular area which has a current kind of global lock, like we think Nova computed synonymous? You know, what if we have 10 different compute platforms or one per container technology and those kind of arise organically, then, you know, it's not as clear to everyone who may not understand the nuances of the tagging system or may not have bought in from the beginning what the differences are and what's the right path for them. And, and are we counting on, you know, VARs to help them figure that out? I mean, what is kind of the strategy around that? What's so we have a provision in the, in the requirements for new project teams. Uh, which is that you should not unnecessarily duplicate or, or compete with an existing solution. So it's kind of a fuzzy requirement. Uh, obviously, things that are lower in the, in the stack, like Nova, Keystone, 
uh, would, they, would take a lot of, it would take a lot of effort to convince the TC that we actually need a full new implementation of, of the thing, the glue that binds all those things together, which is the, authentic, the common authentication. And, but as you grow, as you move up, higher up the stack, like uh, uh, metric collections, we have already have multiple solutions for that. And, and maybe the market should decide which one is the best. Or deployment, uh, we used to have a single deployment program and that prevented Puppet modules from being developed within the, the OpenStack community just because we had this uh, deployment program that was focused on, on, uh, on triple O. And, and it ended up not being the best, the best idea in the world. So uh, uh, at least other avenues should have been pursued at the same time. And this model lets us make that judgment call where is competition beneficial or is it actually hurting the, the OpenStack uh, uh, platform as a whole. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, right, the TC still gets a final, like, yes, no on these things. We have a set of guidelines so that it should be relatively smooth in most cases, and but there's still a backstop of, like, no, that would actually substantially damage our community. We're not going to let that, you know, live under this umbrella. Um, we haven't had to pull that trigger yet. Um, the stuff that's been coming in has been very clearly, yep, this, this makes sense. Like, let's have it in. Um, but we reserve that um, as shepherds of the community. And in one, po one point on the governance is that we actually iterate fast in the rules and the tags and the various things. It's not as if we, we had to get it right uh, forever uh, in, 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 and set it in stone and we'll apply it forever. It's not like the OpenStack Foundation bylaws that takes three years to change if, if you realize that they don't match reality. We can iterate fast on, on those things. And if, uh, like Sean said, we, those guidelines are just guidelines for the TC to decide. So you could totally um, uh, see a TC in, in the next six months that will have a slightly different uh, view on the rules that should be applied. Uh, they, they, could, they could basically edit that, that list and add new things or remove things. Um, so it's not set in stone. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see, uh, we'll see the results. I'm confident that it's, it's an improvement because we're basically matching the reality of our community rather than imposing uh, from top to bottom uh, a structure that is, does not match how people work. Um, so I think it's an improvement. But we'll see, uh, with, with time, we'll see if, if that, that's a definite improvement or if we need to iterate and, and improve again on the, on the governance. Anyone else with a question? We've got a couple more minutes. Uh, just a quick one. Are these tags are per release ones or permanent? So the, the tags, um, the way the tags work is there, uh, if you propose a new tag, there's a document within our repository which describes, gives the whole context. Like here's the background, here's why you'd want it, here's the, um, the criteria for which it would be applied, and here's the frequency that this should be revisited. Um, some of these things are, are sort of manual um, uh, things where it's like, we'll do this sort of on a release cycle. Um, others, like the diversity tag, um, there's some provision for doing it in a, in a sort of more... Uh, dynamic way? Yeah, more dynamic way. Um, so that's part of defining the, the question that you want to ask. Um, you know, a tag is really an answer to a question that's being asked, and the timeliness of like how frequently that answer should be refreshed is part of that question, um, and we try to take that in. So there's no global answer for that, but it's part of um, what a tag definition looks like is how often it, it gets updated. And will that be the TC who always uh, checks whether the requirements are fulfilled and the tag can remain? So the, the TC would probably still pull the trigger on the merge just because we own that repository. But uh, I expect a lot of tags to actually be refreshed by people that know the answer better than the TC members. Um, so if we define an operational maturity tag, I, w I hope that the, the ops would propose the changes. And we, we would just, well, that, that sounds about what the tag was meant to be that corresponds to the tag definition. They apply the rules. It doesn't have to be the TC members that do all the updating of the tags. Uh, I hope we'll be able to decentralize completely maintenance of those tags. It's just that we're, we're still enforcing that the, 
uh, uh, tags that are proposed are validated by the technical committee, if only to make sure that they're actually answering a useful question rather than you know, just be a, another badge that some project want to add to their collection. Um, so the, the idea is really to, enf to enforce that every tag is as rational and is useful for the users and not just for process sake or whatever. And why I say that the TC approved release tag is completely for the process because that's for the communication for the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, who can propose tags? Anyone. 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 And and this is really a big part of this was, you know, one of our bottlenecks was all this information heading through only the technical committee. We have a lot of smart people in our environment, um, and they should uh, all be able to participate in this mechanism. So, you know. If you're interested in helping, step forward. It's just a change on the governance repository, and you just propose it to change uh, as a change in Garrett. The tag okay. definition is in the subdirectory, just propose a new one. Right. And I think we're out of time, so thank you all for coming. Thanks. Thanks.